Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the first Australians uh, on whose lands we meet and whose cultures are amongst the, the oldest continuing cultures in human history. It's my pleasure this afternoon to introduce to you uh, our speaker, uh, who is well known to many and uh, has been a player on the world stage for, for many years. Uh, in saying that I'm going to introduce, I should say a little bit about the outline of the program. Um, I'm going to uh, um, introduce the speaker. Uh, we'll have time for questions and answers at the end uh, so that uh, the speaker will be allowed the courtesy of uh, continuous speaking. Um, my colleague, Professor Bruce Chapman, uh, will run the Q&A session. He's a much tougher customer than I am, so he can manage that. Uh, and uh, then we'll have um, a vote of thanks and a wrap-up at the end. Um, KP Sama Ali uh, is, as I said, known to, to many of you uh, as one of the uh, leading personnel on the world stage from the what has been at times troubled history of the, the nation of Nepal. Uh, he um, has himself had a, a troubled political life, uh, having been imprisoned for a very long period of time in his younger days uh, for his uh, views and actions politically in his home country, and rose from that to positive engagement in the uh, democratic changes that took place in that country uh, to become um, Deputy Prime Minister and um, Minister for Foreign Affairs, uh, in which roles, of course, he became known to the outside world. Uh, his, um, his vita lists a, a long number of, of achievements but I think it's particularly the, the, the thing that we notice is his connection with, with other countries and with the outside world. And I'm sure uh, when he tells us uh, about the subject of, of his talk this afternoon, uh, we'll see that those ideas uh, flow two ways, from that country to the outside and from the outside in. Uh, he wants to, uh, to talk to us about the People's Multi-Party Democracy, which as I understand it, and perhaps I'm going to learn a lot more and improve my understanding, but as I understand it, it's both um, uh, an ideal and a movement, and uh, it's in that uh, frame of words of a People's Multi-Party Democracy, uh, it's subtitled, I'm going to read that, A Process of Social Democratisation in the Context of Nepal, uh, that our speaker this afternoon, uh, Mr. Sama Ali, is going to address us. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Professor Trevor Bruce, Professor Bruce Chapman, respected professors, Deputy Head of Mission and of his Embassy to Australia. Dear diplomats, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I feel privileged and honored to be here to attend this program as a speaker in one of the leading and prestigious universities in the world, which has contributed a lot to enhance the field of education, research, and academic excellence. I wish the grand success of this university, and I would like to appreciate the contributions made by this university in different fields, not only limited to the Australian territory, but also to the world and for the development of that population. Some Nepalese students and researchers are 
getting benefit from this university. And I would like to appreciate. And also, I would like to thank Mr. Ian Young, Vice Chancellor, and all Crawford School team for this opportunity to provide. As Professor Bruce announced that uh, I want to confine basically myself in my space to explain about the People's Multi Party Democracy, which is the guiding principle and political program, basically propounded by the late Madan Kumar Bandari. the late General Secretary and very popular people's leader of my party and Nepalese people. Some 20 years before, he propounded the theory of people's party, party democracy. Being based on the experiences of Nepalese democratic movement and the movement of social change, transformation and management, and similarly drawing the lessons from the international moments. Dear friends, happiness is the final destiny and essence of all desires and evils of men. All the efforts, either they are in the field of political moments, political changes, or others, they are concentrated to achieve happiness. In this regard, 20th century, or even the century of great victories and successes, 20th century. Remain the century of national liberation, independence, and tremendous scientific and other achievements in the field of transport and communication, in the field of different fields. 20th century Egypt Island. But still, Despite of all these achievements, <coughs> there are many challenges for human beings to achieve the goal of happiness. Poverty, ignorance, exploitation, and discrimination still remains in the world. And we have to eliminate all these things and establish the new, democratic, justifiable, equitable, and prosperous society, where human dignity is valued, respected, and the goal of achieving happiness is achieved. And as I mentioned before, the principle and program uh, which we have named as People's Multi-Party Democracy is aimed uh, to achieve this goal, this goal. In this regard, Nepal has more complicated and complex challenges to achieve these goals because 
of the past political systems, unjust political systems, and economic backwardness. For these reasons, we fought against the monarchy, against the feudalistic system, to achieve democracy, social justice, equality, and prosperity. In this connection, People's Party Party Democracy guided us and even now the guidance of People's Party Party Democracy is perhaps more important than in the previous times. <laughs> People's Party Party Democracy uh, recognizes the difference and diversity in the nature and plurality in the society. There are differences and diversities, diversities in the nature. And the social diversity are the reflections of those natural diversities. And in nature, everything is different. Nothing is similar, even of the same race or same species. Of the same age, same time, same period, but they are different. And the, in society, pluralism or pluralistic society is the reflection of that natural diversity. And competitive multi-party system is the reflection of that pluralistic society political manifestation of that pluralistic society. So, only the competitive multi-party system can be the real uh, multi-party system. Other multi-party systems uh, without competition or without the right of opposition cannot be multi-party system in the real sense. And what if People's Party Party democratic system uh, in the first uh, appearance it appears like uh, uh, it's like uh, limited to the political question and political areas. But in fact it is not limited to the political areas. But its area is social, economic, cultural, and environmental women rights, etc., related to the entire human society and women necessities. People's multi party democracy emphasizes on the responsible presentation and activities in the process of development or on the question of use of the natural resources. Sustainable economic development, the question of sustainability and sustainable development is basically uh, related to this theory of uh, responsible attitude of the use of natural resources. We find uh, People's Party Party Democracy is uh, as a comprehensive and complete uh, principle of uh, social change, transformation, and management. 
and on the question of uh, social change, transformation, and management, the People's Multi Party Democracy is must scientific, modern, and social principle. Uh, we need on the question of uh, social changes, transformation, and management, all the three aspects, scientific, modern, and social, all the three aspects are necessary. If a system is not scientific, if a so system is not modern, or if a system is not social, then it cannot bring happiness. It cannot bring prosperity, it cannot provide social justice and equality. So, uh, and only the theory in the name of scientific or uh, science, uh, we cannot just uh, follow uh, the theories of uh, uh, physics and chemistry, but uh, social norms and values developed during the past thousands of years and basically scientific social theories or social sciences we must follow. In this regard, about people's multi-party democracies, democracies uh, uh, angle and opinion, let Mother Mandari some 20 years before in a gathering of the World leaders of leftist and leftist <coughs> moment in a uh, city of India, Kolkata, uh, raised some very important questions. That time, the Soviet Union was collapsed. The countries, some dozen of countries of uh, Eastern Europe, were uh, deformed and uh, collapsed, and Soviet Union itself was uh, split. Uh, at that uh, time when the question was raised very seriously about the relevancy of Marxism, relevancy of socialism. In such a situation, Mother Mandari raised question that whether the validity of uh, human desires to live in a justifiable, equitable, prosperous, democratic society if the time was over and ended or not. He answered that the time was not ended and the desire of human beings is still are valid and we can achieve the goal of achieving prosperous, equal, democratic uh, society where human values and dignities are respected. And the essence of human desire Achieve happiness is obtained. But uh, the idea of uh, People's Party Party democracy was didn't get that much uh, uh, importance in the international uh, debate and forums. Uh, uh, maybe uh, it was propounded by uh, a small and backward or, uh, like that country. I don't know why, but uh, we have found different uh, uh, theories, programs, and practices in the world. And people's multi party democracy is more comprehensive, more scientific, more modern, and social. And related uh, uh, not only to the uh, political areas, but also other uh, areas of entire areas of social life and the future of human beings and future of art and uh, related to environment, climate change, etc. also it addresses. People's multi-party democracy has two aspects. One aspect is its ideological aspects, theoretical aspect, which is more uh, permanent type of. Uh, and another aspect is programmatic aspect which is necessary to update uh, according to the time. Uh, and People's Multi-Party Democracy is update, updated 
particularly its programmatic size is updated because uh, when it was propounded at that time in Nepal there was monarchy and monarchy was constitutional one at that time but now we are in a republican state so it has to be changed it has to be updated the uh, programmatic side of people's party party democracy but its essence what is universal aspect what what is uh, fundamental democratic aspect uh, that in our opinion there is uh, no alternative of marxism philosophical and in the sense of political uh, changes and transformation and social management Marxism is a process of history, analyzing and seeking path for transformation of society, appropriate transformation, progressive transformation of society. People's Party Party democracy has no prejudice with any type of social, economic, or uh, political systems or practices. uh we uh, do not follow just the practices practices of some countries in some places uh but we is uh, during uh, uh, the formulation of people's party party democracy we uh, uh summarized I draw the lessons from the experiences of positive and negative results of different points. And in the name of uh, liberalism or neoliberalism or in the name of democracy, if social justice and equality and fair distribution system is ignored, we have corrected that aspect. And if in the name of communism, socialism, or uh, uh, other names if the political freedoms and democratic rights are ignored or unaccepted then we have uh, ruthlessly rejected those ideas we accept political democracy we accept social justice we accept not uh, we give uh, uh, stress on the question of uh, productivity and production but fair distribution of the resources and the achievements made by the women beings during these years and all the fruits of development should be distributed uh, at well and particularly pmpd is synthesis of about century long social awareness and democratic movement as well as more than half century long experience of leftist movement is still there are questions either in the group to whether there is still relevance of socialism or is there any space of new life of socialism after the down out downfall of soviet union whether the dream of uh, people to live in free equitable and justifiable justifiable condition have come to an end after the fall of uh, different uh, practices in the name of socialism particularly in the soviet union or in eastern europe people's party party democracy proudly gives answer to these questions sir and says yes that there, there is future of socialism and people have full fledged right to live in just and equitable prosperous uh, society
is the occurrence of Q aeroplane crashes. Can it mystify all aeronautical science? Similarly, we cannot generalize that failure of a definite model in this or that place, in this or that time, socialism is implemented in concerned state. Uh, cannot uh, give any conclusion that uh, uh, this is the failure of socialism. But uh, those failures were the failures of wrong practices, mistakes. However, some people say that socialism has future, and there is no alternative of socialism, of course. But saying or chanting this merely doesn't. So PNPD focuses socialism comes with good governance, political prudence, rule of law, higher productivity, and sound distribution system. In uh, the experiences have proved that completely control economy. In the globalization era, it's not possible. Similarly, theory based on the exploitation and market economy is impossible and honest. honest. So, some incentives to all contributors of production is essential. So far, the question of Nepal is, leftist movement has been an indispensable part of the democratic process of Nepal. My party was founded some 62 years before, and at the beginning of 1949, and fought against the very dark era of Rana Oligarchy, Rana family rule, and defeated. After that, there was tug of war between the monarchy and the people. And at the beginning of the 60s, they then monarchy again captured power and declared monarchy as dictatorial one. All the political parties and political rights of the people were banned. As uh, Professor Bush uh, said that, myself I spent many years in prison fighting for the cause of democracy against the autocratic monarchy and so-called artillery system at that time. With uh, long history of struggle and through the process of a political struggle, my party got <coughs> so many experiences and contributed a lot to make the people aware, conscious, to organize them, to lead them uh, in the moment against autocracy and for the cause of democracy and achieve successes in the past. In this uh, process, we are able to re-establish multi-party democracy 
in 1990. There was a joint peaceful movement in 1990, and that was successful. And again, the monarchy was put under the constitutional frame. Uh, but uh, after a few years, after uh, about uh, 11 or 12 years, he froze. Uh, monarchy again captured the power and declared itself again autocratic in February 2005. Yes, I. And in 2006, of uh, again we organized very, very popular, a peaceful moment. And the monarchy was pushed back. Again, the joint parliament was re-established. And the moment was successful. During this period, uh, the ultra leftist faction of Nepalese politics, uh, namely Maoist party, organized violent movement activities in the name of People's Party. Their name was Maoist party, and in the name of People's Party, they launched so called People's War. In fact, that was an insurgency, and for some ten years, up to the uh, moment uh, of April 2006, was successful. Until then, they launched that so-called people's war. So-called, uh, in the name of people's war, they killed so many people, and almost about 17,000 people were killed. In five states were destroyed. So many women were widowed. So many children were orphaned. And uh, that was a very serious problem. Two types of problem at the same time. In the one hand, uh, monarchy declared itself a, a, a autocratic one. On the other hand, Ultra leftist uh, uh, launched violent moment. And people were suffering from both sides and they had to fight against those both extreme ideas and practices. But finally, people won through the moment of uh, 2006. After that, they re-established, restored parliament, declared that all the rights of the king, of the monarch, were transferred to the prime minister. And prime minister had both rights as the head of the government and as the head of the uh, state house. And after the constituent election, uh, assembly's election, constituent assembly from its first meeting, declared the uh, end of monarchy and established a republic in Nepal, a republic in the state. Now we are in a transitional phase. We have achieved a republican state and we have to manage properly. And still there is peace process, but we are in a dilemma. There are some complications because the Maoist party became maybe different agents, but it's fact that the Maoist party became the first party in the Constituent Assembly, in the parliament, and now is leading the government. We have to manage the problems created by the Maoist party. We have to manage the arms and combatants organized and collected by them. But they are leading the government. So we are in a complicated situation. Uh, 
but we are. And uh, before uh, May 28, some three and some few months are left, we have to manage the question of uh, combatants and weapons and complete the peace process and promote a new constitution which uh, will be a democratic constitution which will guarantee the democratic political rights and all sorts of political rights of the people and <coughs> equal a society based on equality and social justice with national unity etc. And we have to work together to achieve prosperity. But uh, it's a very challenging task. The Constituent Assembly was elected for two years and the term was given for two years to complete this task. But now we are going to pass four years. We are going to complete four years and still it is not sure that whether we will be able to complete this task or not. And we, if we are able to give enough or adequate pressure to the Maoist, then perhaps we can complete this task. Otherwise, it's very hard. A little bit of progress is made in this recent few days. Maoist uh, party, when it's raised in the government and was leading the government, decided to recognize the decisions of so-called their people's government uh, during the violence period. But the Supreme Court issued a stay order. And the political party gave pressure to cancel the decision of the government. And it was cancelled yesterday. And we are making progress, of course. But still, there are complications. But we are sure that we have multi party democracy. We have very scientific, modern, and social theory of political uh, changes and uh, transformation and management. We have uh, educated and experienced people. International situation is favorable for, in favor of democracy. Sure. There cannot uh, uh, be restored any type of uh, uh, autocratic, uh, extreme uh, system. Or there is no possibility of uh, such kind of uh, uh, establishment again. And uh, Maoist party cannot go back to launch again the, that sort of previous kind of uh, uh, violence. So they will be compelled <coughs> to remain in this process, in this peace process, though it is a little bit complicated and the process is still slow. So we are hopeful that peace process also will be completed and a new and democratic uh, the constitution will be promulgated. There are some uh, complicated questions and if we are not able to resolve those uh, questions and if those uh, disputes among the political parties <coughs> and different groups of the people, then we can postpone those complicated issues uh, later and we can declare the constitution if the peace process is completed or if the basic tax of peace process is completed, I mean, if the competence and the question of competence and arms is resolved, then we can uh, issue the uh, new constitution. Uh, now I don't want to take uh, more time. Uh, as I said, that Nepal is a country of diversity geographically and other, uh, from other aspects also. And we have very glorious past, glorious history. History of uh, uh, knowledge in the past, history of development. We have uh, uh, 
cities like uh, living uh, museum of cultural heritage is super similar. Uh, we can talk about uh, a city uh, inside Kathmandu Valley, the capital city. Nearby, just uh, near, there is Bakum city, like a living museum of uh, cultural heritage, architects. Uh, that set of thousands of years uh, Nepalese people have very curious history and they are enjoying all that sort of things. But different, uh, there are different reasons uh, why a very beautiful and rich uh, country uh, by the sense of uh, natural resources is now backward and under developed or developing. But uh, uh, we are uh, always working together with the international community in favor of democracy, in favor of human rights, in favor of uh, um, uh, climate change and other uh, environmental questions and on the question of human rights. And in the in this era of globalization, we are ready to work together. And particularly in this juncture, we uh, need support in favor of democracy, in favor of peace, in favor of social justice and equality, in favor of our national unity and in favor of our prosperity. We uh, request support uh, from outside also. And particularly, I am very glad today to be here. And uh, I feel very proud because uh, uh, I was uh, uh, looking after the foreign ministry when my embassy was in of here. Uh, at <coughs> that time, uh, I had made the decision to open up uh, establish embassy here, uh, including other some countries. And uh, uh, finally, I would like to uh, thank the Australian government and people uh, who have supported us in this process in our endeavors to develop our country and particularly to clearly for its support to provide quality education, technical education, modern education to our people. Uh, it's very, very valuable for us. And I believe that uh, ANL and uh, the whole Australian government and people uh, very to support us. And from our part, we are always friendly and supportive uh, towards Australia and development and peace and stability in Australia. And Nepal is a very, very beautiful country. So I invite Australia to visit Nepal to enjoy the scenic beauty of uh, the mountains, uh, the glaciers, the lakes, the hills, rivers, and cultural heritage and glorious uh, aspects of uh, my country. Thank you.